Welcome back to ASEAN News, and here is some of the updated for you. Malaysian Prime Minister unveils new cabinet last week. Prime Minister of Malaysia Anwar Ibrahim unveiled his ministerial cabinet. He would also retake the role of finance minister he had served 30 years ago. The newly elected Prime Minister's cabinet lineup includes heads of various political blocs who form a coalition government. Datuk Seri Ahmad Zahid Habidi takes the role of Deputy Prime Minister and Rural and Regional Development Minister, while the other Deputy Prime Minister serves as Plantation Industries and Commodities Ministers. The new cabinet includes 25 ministerial level cabinet members. Indonesian says the criminal law is a setback for democracy. Indonesian said the rectification of a controversial criminal code was a setback for a country's democracy, with a country's parliament banning sex outside marriage with a punishment of up to one year in jail. The government should focus on fulfilling people's civil rights, the economy, and culture, such as job vacancies, health care, and etc. They should have passed laws related to that. Instead, they passed a law that is not democratic, controls our private lives, and does not take care of public matters. It is a setback for our country, which had fought for reform, and now we are moving backwards. Kita dari yang sudah diperjuangkan reformasi, itu justru kita kembali lagi ke sebelumnya. Legal expert B.V. Trisusanti said that while it was possible the law would not be strictly enforced, it will create a feeling that we cannot freely criticize the government and psychologically affect the society. So there are some technicalities indeed, but um, those articles still can be threat to, to democracy because they are actually against the, the constitution. Uh, there's the human rights and uh, at the end of the day although maybe uh, conduct is not um, um, punished uh, in practice but to have such a regulation to have such a legal framework will also create some kind of stigmatization and then also the feeling that we cannot freely criticize the government and um, psychologically affect uh, the society. I believe that the government should actually delay the process a little bit, open up for more participation, because what they call as participation for the past months was only just socialization, only um, how do you call it, uh, one way communication from the government uh, to the participants. Uh, and then they can uh, take away or at least revise the 18 articles that have been our concern. Uh, and then we can have really the new uh, penal code, uh, you know, departing from the uh, colonial period. So I think this is still um, a failure if the, if the key success is departure from the colonial period. The new code, which will apply to Indonesians and foreigners alike, also prohibits cohabitation between unmarried couples. The laws, which include more lenient sentences for those charged with corruption, will not come into effect for three years to allow for implementing regulations to be drafted. But it has sparked concern that it may scare away tourists and harm investment in the world's third largest democracy. The government had planned to pass the revision of the country's colonial era criminal code in 2019, but nationwide protest halted its passage. Indonesia police says blast in West Java a suicide attack. Indonesian police said a blast at the police station in the city of Bandung in West Java province was suspected suicide bombing. National police spokesperson Ahmad Ramadan added that local police were closely coordinating with the counterterrorism unit to investigate the incident. According to police, one person was killed and several were wounded shortly after a man with a knife entered the building. The source of a blast was not immediately clear. 
Islamic militants have carried out attacks in the world's largest Muslim-majority nation, including at churches, police stations and venues frequented by foreigners. Witnesses shocked by Indonesia's suicide bombing in Bandung. Witnesses described their shock following a suicide bomb attack at a police station in the Indonesian city of Bandung, which authorities said killed one other person and wounded at least ten. I was selling things here, and suddenly I heard the sound of an explosion. We looked towards the direction, and all the residents and I walked there to the police station that was bombed. Police told us to disperse, to leave the place because it wasn't safe, and they said there was a bomb. Indonesian police chief Listio Sigit Prabowo told a news conference that the suicide bomber was believed to be affiliated with the Islamic State-inspired group Jama Ansharut Daula and had previously been jailed on terrorism charges. The police chief added that the attacker identified as Agus Yatno was released in the late 2021 and investigators had found dozens of documents protesting the country's controversial new criminal code at the crime scene. Tesla's launches in Thailand hits up EV market competition. Tesla Inc. launched two electric vehicle models in Thailand, making its first foray into the regional autos hub that has been long dominated by Japanese manufacturers. The launch of the two electric vehicles, which prices ranging between 1.7 million baht or $48,447 to 2.5 million baht or $71,205, comes as Thailand makes a push for electric vehicle adoption and production by offering tax cuts and subsidies. The U.S. automaker plans to start selling its electric vehicles in Southeast Asia's second biggest economy via online channels, with delivery set to start early next year, but it faces stiff competition from Chinese brands like PYD and Great Wall Motors, which have set up showrooms and distribution partners in recent years to reach customers and offers electric vehicles with prices starting at 800,000 baht or $22,794. Thailand is Asia's fourth largest auto assembly and export hub for companies like Toyota Motor Corporation and Honda Motor Co. Ltd. It produces about 1.5 million to 2 million vehicles annually, of which about half are exported. The government wants at least 30% of vehicles produced in the country to be electric by 2030. Chinese Premier meets heads of World Bank, IMF, and WTO to a strengthen multilateral cooperation for global common development. Chinese Premier Li Keqiang on Thursday met with visiting president of the World Bank Group, David Malpass, managing director of the International Monetary Fund, Kristalina Georgieva, director general of the World Trade Organization, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, in Huangshan City, East China Zanhui Province, respectively. The roundtable is themed Strengthening Multilateral Cooperation for Global Common Development. Li said that China will work to better coordinate epidemic prevention and control with economic and social development, protect people's life, and maintain the normal order of production and daily life. Malpa said that the World Bank attaches great importance to its relation with China. The World Bank appreciates China's adjustment of the epidemic prevention and control response measures, welcomes China to open its door wider to the world, and stands ready to deepen cooperation with China. Li said, China is willing to work with the IMF and other parties to strengthen macro policy coordination and address global challenges such as debts and climate change. Meanwhile, Georgieva said that the IMF highly values the development of relations with China, adding that it appreciates China's optimization and adjustment of its epidemic prevention and control measures which is expected to help drive economic growth. The IMF chief said the IMF would like to work closely with China to prevent global economic fragmentation and jointly deal with common challenges.
In addition, Okonjo Iwala applaud China's positive and constructive role in safeguarding the multilateral trading system and the WTO is willing to continue to enhance cooperation with China and jointly uphold an open and robust multilateral trading system with China. In the event, the participants will have discussions and exchanges on issues including building an open world economy, boosting global economic recovery and growth, and China's commitment to energizing the world economy through deepening reform and opening up. Thank you everyone, have a nice weekend, stay safe, stay healthy, see you.